Introduction Astonishing Matthew Kelly For most of Jesus' public life, people crowded around him. If he was teaching in the synagogue, they crowded around him. If he was walking in the street, they crowded around him. If he was having a meal in a home, they crowded around him. But there were two times when people fled from Jesus. The obvious one was after his arrest and crucifixion. Where were all the crowds that had followed him? Where were all those people who witnessed his miracles? Where were all the people he had cured and fed? Where were the crowds of people who cheered him into the city less than a week ago? Nowhere to be found. The other time people fled from Jesus was when he spoke to them about the Eucharist. He said, I am the bread of life. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. John chapter 6, verse 48 and 53. Immediately after this, we read in the Gospel, when many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a difficult teaching. Who can accept it? John chapter 6, verse 60. And a few lines later we read, After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. John chapter 6, verse 66. Notice Jesus didn't say, Oh, come back, I was only kidding. Let's talk about it. Maybe I was wrong. Perhaps we can change this teaching. We can work something out. No. He turned to his disciples, just as he turns to you and me today, and said, Do you also wish to leave me? Will you flee from Jesus or remain by his side? The Eucharist is at the core of our faith. Let's explore what it is and what it means to you. There are a lot of things I love about being Catholic. But at the top of the list is the Eucharist. Most people have never really stopped to think about it, but the Eucharist is amazing. I was asked once, what would have to happen for you to leave the Catholic Church? I thought about the question for a long time. I combed through the lowest moments in Catholic history testing each to see if one of them would have been the breaking point that made me leave. But after thinking it through, I decided I could never leave the Catholic Church. The reason is because I believe that Jesus is truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. Where else can I get the Eucharist? Sure, some other churches might have better music, but in the whole scheme of things, music is trivial compared to the Eucharist. Other churches might have more engaging preachers, but these are trivial compared to the Eucharist. When we go to Mass on Sunday, the danger is thinking that the music and the homily are the most important things. Don't take the trivial and make it important. That's the way of the world. Get clear about what's really important, what matters most, and life will be a lot simpler and more joyful. At Mass on Sunday, the homily could be in a language I don't understand. The music could be a complete train wreck. There could be kids running up and down the aisles, screaming at the top of their lungs, throwing crayons and eating snacks, or eating crayons and throwing snacks, and that's okay. Because the moment when I receive the Eucharist is a pivotal moment in my week. It's a moment of transformation. A moment when I get to receive who and what I wish to become. And I can never leave that. It doesn't matter how good the music or preaching is elsewhere. I cannot leave the Eucharist. I will not leave Jesus. I hope you won't either. When I reflect on the gift of faith I have been given, I am led to the conclusion that once we believe in the Eucharist, we are given the grace to look beyond a bad homily. 
the grace to look beyond uninspiring music, and the grace to look beyond music that elevates our hearts, minds, and souls. For it is beyond all of these things, way beyond all these things, that we find Jesus in the Eucharist. This sets the Catholic Church apart. Jesus truly present in the Eucharist. The Eucharist is uniquely Catholic. 